Hi, I'm Nate Schomer, certified professional dog trainer, and in today's video, I'm going to show you how to teach your dog to run on the treadmill. In this video, I will be demonstrating with my Malinois Ari, and we're going to be using the Life Pro Paw Runner Pet Treadmill. With over half the dogs being overweight or obese, it's more important now than ever to keep your dog on a daily exercise plan. And we all know that exercise is vital to our well-being and happiness. In addition, having your dog on a daily exercise routine has been scientifically proven to maintain muscle and bone health, lower stress levels, regulate mood, improve sleep, increase heart and brain health, support a healthy metabolism, and helping to ensure your dog lives a long and healthy life. The first thing I want to do anytime I'm teaching a dog how to run on the treadmill is to teach them the climb command. Some people call this the place command. All it is is an elevated platform. Now for me, climb is very transferable. I have her climb on multiple different platforms, whether it's a dog bed, the couch, the bed inside the house, climb, or any other random elevated platform. This makes it very transferable to the treadmill. Now, when we teach this, I first like to get a dog to do the behavior by showing them a physical cue. The first one is with luring. We simply take food and we guide our dog into the position, then we mark and reward. When I say mark, that's a word or sound that predicts a reward. For Ari, I can use yes, which just means a treat, or I can use free, which means treat plus release. When we add the command, using the marker that predicts treat plus release helps with the training process because it teaches the dog the faster they perform the behavior, the faster they get to jump up and get the reward and the release from that position. Speed is based on motivation. The more motivated your dog is, the faster they're going to perform the behavior. Now that we know we can get her to do it with luring, we can introduce the second physical cue that I like to use, which is leash pressure. Each dog has what's known as a classical opposition reflex. So when you pull on a leash, they hunker back into position and they resist. We wanna teach them to go with the pressure on the leash. When you're teaching a new dog, what you wanna do is apply the pressure and then lure the dog with a piece of food. After doing that enough times, your dog will learn to follow the leash just like Ari is. When you can guarantee your dog performing the behavior, if you want, you can add a command. When teaching a command, the command must come before the physical cue. So if I wanted to tell her to get off the platform, I would say off, then I would lure her with the treat or the leash, marking and rewarding the behavior. Same thing if I wanted her to go back on, I would say climb or place or treadmill if you wanna use a specific command for the treadmill. And then we would guide our dog into the behavior, mark and reward. So it would look something like this, off, then we would cue, yes, then we reward. If you're worried about having to reinforce the stay, as I mentioned earlier, use the terminal marker. So you can say climb, free, reward. Now she already knows climb, so I'm gonna say a different random word. Come here, Ari. She gets excited and barks. So I can say something like happy, and then I would guide her on the platform, free, mark and reward. Off. Now that we have our dog performing the climb command, we're ready to transition them over to the treadmill. So I'm gonna be demonstrating with Ari here on the Life Pro Paw Runner Pet Treadmill. And when I first get a dog to approach the treadmill, I wanna make sure I keep it in a fun and positive experience. So I'm going to use luring and I'm going to guide her on the treadmill. Once she's on the treadmill, we can mark and reward. So again, marking would be yes and reward or free and reward. And we're gonna guide her off. When I'm first teaching a treadmill, I want the dog to enter the treadmill from the back and I want them to exit the treadmill from the front. This teaches, teaches them the routine of entering from one way, exiting from the other. After you have your dog going on and off the treadmill, as I mentioned earlier, you can add the command. Now, I like to teach what's known as the implied stay. If I tell a dog a commanded position, sit down, come, place, climb, treadmill, once they go to that position, they're now in a stay. When we have our dog in a stay, we have three ways to release them or three ways to keep them on the stay. I can use my terminal marker, free, and that would release her. I can use a release word such as break. So break just means release, but it doesn't guarantee a treat. That's why it's a release word and not a marker. Or I can give her a new command such as off or come or something like that. We have three ways to keep them on a stay. If I tell her treadmill and I guide her on and I say yes, she's on a stay. 
If I told her treadmill and she went on the platform and I said, good girl, nice job, she's on a stay. Or if I said nothing at all, she is on a stay. So we're gonna release her using the release word break. Very good. And when you use your release word, if you want, you can still give your dog a treat. It just doesn't guarantee a treat like the terminal marker free does. When I say free, it guarantees the treat. All right, go climb. The next step is we want to turn the treadmill on and then we're going to do something that our dog enjoys around the treadmill, whether it's playing fetch, tug, or doing some obedience. Now, your dog might step on the treadmill when you bring them over to it. If they do, that's okay, reward that behavior. You're not gonna ask them to do it, but if they do, you wanna make sure that it's something that you like and you're gonna pay them for that behavior. We're gonna keep it on the lowest setting and I'm gonna switch the mode over so I know what speed it's going at, so 0.5 and that's the lowest setting. We don't wanna make it too high too fast. We just want our dog to hear it and we wanna do some fun obedience, as I said, or play with a toy or something like that. Even, yes, even petting your dog, anything that your dog enjoys, that's how we create a strong positive association. We take something the dog enjoys while we're introducing something new to them. So I like to do a little bit of obedience. Maybe I'm gonna tell her down. I can tell her through. Oh, she didn't do through, but that's okay. Center, and she did a spin, center. A little sloppy today, no big deal. Down, spin, heel. That was a little better. Break. Now that our dog is doing some obedience, go climb. And we created that strong positive association. We're gonna bring our dog over and place them on the treadmill. When you place your dog on the treadmill, you wanna make sure that it's turned off. So I'm gonna bring her over and I'm gonna have her treadmill. Very good. I'm gonna remove the leash that's currently attached to her collar and I'm going to attach the second leash that is on the treadmill. And you wanna make sure the leash is slightly longer than the safety cord. This is attached to our dog's collar and if for some reason your dog comes off the treadmill, this will shut it off. When you place it on, do a pull to make sure it's gonna hold. See right there, it popped off. So I wanna make sure that it's gonna stay nice and snug. There we go, and we pull, good. So now it's holding nice and snug to her collar. We're gonna turn it on, three, two, one, and we're gonna keep it at the lowest setting. As it moves, I'm gonna provide continual reinforcement. Every step, I'm gonna give her a treat. When I teach a new behavior, we do continual reinforcement, meaning we reward every single correct repetition. As our dog starts to learn it, we can start to space out the rewards. When I teach a dog a new behavior, such as a treadmill, I'm going to use their actual food when I teach the behavior, so I'm not giving the dog a bunch of sugar-filled treats. I knew she was gonna be doing the treadmill today, so we skipped breakfast, so she's nice and hungry. As she's doing well, I'm gonna turn it up. Now, some dogs, when you first turn on the treadmill, they might become a little worried or nervous. We're gonna keep the session short. We can use the leash pressure to help them walk forward. We can assist them by applying a little bit of pressure on the back end or underneath by their chest and rewarding them and then ending the session. When you wanna remove your dog from the treadmill, you wanna make sure that you turn it off. Once it's come to a complete stop, we can remove the leash as well as the safety clip and we'll have our dog exit the treadmill from the front. Come on, baby. That might be the very first session, nice and short and simple. Again, we wanna make sure that our dog stays comfortable and the experience is always positive. The next time I bring my dog out, I might ask for a little bit more. So I'm gonna have her come back on. We're gonna attach the clip as well as the safety clip and she's a little bit more advanced, you may not be at this point for a week or two with your dog. We're gonna turn it on. Now this also comes with a remote, so I can increase the speed with the remote, which is very convenient, and I can continue to give my dog rewards. I like to increase one at a time. So point one, increase, another point one, increase, and I like to do each one at a time while giving my dog a reward. Now you may notice she's looking down quite a bit. That's because she has to pay attention to the speed in which she's walking as well as where she's walking. So she's not walking on the front of the treadmill. Very good. She's also looking at where the treats are coming from. Nice job. I can increase the speed here. And if you start to go too fast too soon, 
then just slow down, make sure your dog ends on a win, end the session and try again the next day. There's nothing wrong with going back a step or two in the training process. So I'm gonna, just for demonstration purposes, we're gonna increase the speed a little bit. Now I've done this with her already. So she's gone up to 3.5. And again, she has to stay very focused to what she's doing. That's why she's looking down, very normal. And because our dog has to pay attention to the speed as well as where they are stepping, it tires them out significantly faster than a normal walk around the neighborhood or even a jog around the neighborhood because they're using their brain which wears them out mentally faster than just doing something physical alone so it's the combination of that physical and mental exhaustion this is an excellent workout for your dogs especially during those rainy days or if you live in a high rise where you're perhaps not able to exercise your dog on a regular basis, this could help fill that gap. So she's doing really well. We're gonna turn the treadmill off, wait till it comes to a complete stop. Now we can unhook her. Break, break, come on, go get the treats and release her from the treadmill. It also has a few additional features with the remote. So you can change, it has preset programs. You can switch through each one, select the one that you want, hit the power button, which will activate that program and it'll kick on for your dog. Now you can also hit the M button, which is mode, to look at the different settings while your dog is on the treadmill. How many calories, as well as the speed, how long they've been on the treadmill or how much time they have left, as well as the distance traveled. So these additional features can help regulate the training program that you have set in place for your dog. I hope you enjoyed today's episode. If you wanna get a Life Pro Paw Runner Pet Treadmill for yourself, I'm gonna make sure I place a link in the description of this video. Thanks again for watching and we'll see you guys in the next one.